thanks for stopping on our channel, which is dedicated to central heating. And as you can see, I've been doing this a long time. Whether you install or you have heating, hopefully my videos will make a difference. But please leave me a comment in the section below. Lights, action, camera, let's begin. Boiler fans come in various sizes. Some are AC, some are DC, some are a bit of each. So we're going to look at the AC ones and there are two types. There's single speed 230 volts and two speed 230 volts. And we'll look at that in a little while. But we also need to find out whether the fan needs changing. So that's going to be around the year, what, five years old, six years old, seven at the latest. It needs updated to the latest version or it's not been maintained correctly and it's now seized up or about to seize up and how to solve that problem. So we're going to need a good auto ranging multimeter. We're going to need some lubricants. Some of these are good. Some of these are banned, for example. So first of all, let's have a look at the two different types, the single speed fan. We're going to test it with two ways. Firstly, we're going to spin the propeller. And then secondly, we're going to measure how many ohms there are between that neutral terminal and that live terminal. So first of all, let's just do the spin test. Before I can test the windings, I've turned the power off to the boiler so it's nice and dead. I've switched the multimeter onto ohms and now we're going to do the first part of the test is the spin. So I'm just going to gently spin it round and I can see that there's, there's no resistance there at all. Very carefully remove the live and the neutral wire from the terminals and we're going to proceed in measuring the coil. So that copper wire goes round and round and it creates a resistance. And on normal single speed fans, that number is between 20 and 120 ohms. So when I measure this, I can see whether the flue is long enough or the fan is good enough to remove the fumes here of combustion outside to the atmosphere. And of course, age has a big play in this. So first of all, it doesn't matter which terminal you use, but use the holes up here. I'll do you a little close up. So we use that hole there and this hole here. And then now we can see on the display, it's 44 ohms, 0.5 or 6. Now that movement, we don't take any notice. This is a resistance value of 44, which is mid-range. Because most of these single channel or single speed fans go between 40 and 80. The slightly better ones will be a lower number. So they could be 25 to 35 would be the, the best as it were in that respect. And the difference between this coil and another one, which we're going to measure, is simply the length of that copper wire and how fat it is and also how insulated it is to stop itself overheating. So this is one test. Let's do another. On a two-speed fan, it's just another measurement that we have to do to neutral. So we've got two different coils comparing it to the black lead. So I've got in touch with technical and they say mid 60s and mid 90s. So first procedure, as before in ohms, we'll put this one on neutral, this one on here, and then we'll see which terminal this is when it comes up. It should sum out in, so that's the 62. So that's the red lead, and we can see the other one should be 93. So again, we'll put it on the neutral, put it on the top, press hard reasonably, and then we can see here, yes, it's mid 90s. So therefore, that's going to be the slow speed when the gas is on low pressure. Let me show you the easy way of finding out whether the fan needs repairing or replacing or what's going on by that spinning test. So if we go to this one here and just give it a push, we can see that it's obviously lovely, moves gently and stops easily. 
So let's try this one straight away. See, it's stuck. And the problem is the sparing here, and there's another one down below, and the one here and one down below. This one we can get to very easily. We can clean it out and put some oil into it and put it back into the boiler whilst we wait for the latest version. Because once this bearing have gone, it will come back. And you can't say to the customer, it might last a month, it might last six months, and then it will break down. That's just not acceptable. Also, we can't sell them a reconditioned fan because more than likely the factory has discontinued that model and made a much better, stronger one. So we always fit the latest version. But in this particular case, what I'm going to show you is how you can maybe keep it going for a few days or a week, long enough for the new supplied fan to arrive. So what we're going to do is try and rescue this fan because it could be Christmas, merchants are closed, and we need to do something better because it's not really good enough. It's iffy. Sometimes it will, sometimes it won't. So here's the liquids that we need to do, etc. And um, don't forget, sewing machine oil is the one that we're going to actually lubricate. So the procedure is very gently remove the fan from the flue housing because it's easy to damage this and when we spend half an hour cleaning, repairing and oiling, you put it back into the boiler, switch it on and it sounds like a tractor because it's now unbalanced. So always please be careful when you remove the fan to put it onto a nice worktop. So the first thing we can do is use our WD-40 because it's a brilliant degreaser. So we can get a can of this and just put a few drops around here and then very carefully on the bottom bearings, just a little bit here and a little bit there, nothing huge. And then with a paper towel, just gently mop it up here and mop it up there. The next thing we need to have is our favorite can of fresh air to blow that out because it's got into the bearings but because it's a degreaser it doesn't oil the spindle because it's not designed for that so we have to get that fresh air and put it all around here and remove as much of that WD-40 as possible and obviously we're going to use some more of this now we've got silicon now you would think silicon in here was very good but it isn't because when silicon gets hot, it gets gungy and greasy, which is not a lot of good here. Then we've got our favorite three in one. This is absolutely excellent for lots of things, but it has the same problem. As this gets hot, it goes greasy and really thick. So you can put a few drops in here and then it will gradually grind the fan to the pulpits. So imagine this was Singer sewing machine oil. Here's a picture that we've got. I couldn't get one in time to make the film. And all you're going to do is to put a couple of drops in here and just gently, just gently move it. A few more drops, gently, gently, to get it into those bearings and you'll find it's going to be a lot, lot easier. And we've got to repeat the process very slowly at an angle that we can just put a few drops in here to hopefully push it down and again move the spindle and eventually this should be more than loose enough to put gently back into the housing on the flue check all the seals the washers the o-rings and the screws are perfect plug the fan in put a cover on because when we switch this on we want to make sure that the tube to fire up the boiler, the blowing tube, do you remember? That's disconnected, so the boiler doesn't fire up. But we need to protect this, so you'd either wear goggles, a mask, uh, or put the cover on, just so this starts working, because if we're gonna have oil, we'll shoot all over the place. Well, in the flue, it's not too bad, because we can just get more tissue paper and just clean up the mess. So just be careful when we do switch it on for the first time without gas, we just want to lubricate it, wear goggles, wear a mask, because it will splash. 
and I hope that this is giving you some ideas, but remember, this is a temporary job. We've got a brand new latest version zipping through the roads all the way to the house. So that's the proper works. And now we can send this fan back to a company that can recondition it, and we've got a spare one to lend them on the next job. Because we always say, if this model's going down today, there'll be others in town, same age. So we've got a spare one that we can zoom off, and that's how we interchange parts as a temporary measure. Here's a really good example of a manufacturer, Worcester, who's taken the time and trouble not to fit just a standard single speed, but two speeds. So what's the advantage? As we can see on the cutaway, there's a really good reason. So the question is, peoples, is it for modulating in hot water? Does it modulate in central heating mode? That sounds logical because that's cheaper to run. But the answer is, it's a time delay. A lot of boilers, no, a few boilers, the manufacturer thinks about the consumption of the amount of gas that this uses. And where the two-speed fan comes into place is that there's a time delay of up to three minutes on low gas. So the fan would obviously have to run at slow speed. This particular one is around 19 seconds, and then over the next minute, it slowly increases the gas flame until it reaches a point where the sensors in the top send the fan into full speed. And that saves an awful lot of money, and especially people on LPG who pay their bills in gold bars. That's why this is one of the best boilers that's ever been built on the planet. One way we can measure the quality of the fan is using air pressure. Water gauges are a complete waste of time because they're simply not accurate. We need a digital handheld one, and there's also one on your gas flue analyzer. So first of all, what we need to do is to simply remove the tube that blows, which is identified either on the air pressure switch or on the fan, and then we put our manometer into the same hole, switch on, and this is going to be one of those very rare times that we switch the hot water on demand. So the boiler can't fire up because obviously I've disconnected it. But the hot water will send the fan into full speed. Whereas, as I said earlier, if this was switched on in central heating mode, we could be standing here for three minutes, which is not a lot of use. So now we can see how many millibars of air pressure is being generated by that fan and the flu. And if you get that information from the factory, so they should tell you. And then particularly on condensing boilers, it's usually written in the manual as well. So this is a really good way of testing a fan. One thing we've found out from various organizations that occasionally, just occasionally, some hero buys a can of WD-40 and they spray it all over here, switch the boiler on and it explodes. There's a surprise. On the can, it says, inflammable. It is. It will explode quite happily. And here's a cutaway of the instructions where it tells you, don't put it anywhere near heat. And I've seen engineers go like this and look down around, they absolutely drown them, switch it on and then whoosh. Some of them, of course, get their eyebrows and their hair burnt out. But basically, they're going to buy a new boiler, which is terrific. So instead of selling a new fan, they're going to give them a brand new boiler. So there's a clever thing. WD-40 is absolutely brilliant. Not for fans. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to our channel and have a look at all my other adult videos and any comments I'll be happy to answer. Take care.